everyone for joining us today. We will get started here shortly. We're just um, making sure everyone gets in and have quite a few people still um, logging on. Hi, folks. Welcome. Well, we've got a crowd here today. That's that's pretty cool. Um, it's and it's nice to uh, to see you all again. Um, and it's nice to be back with United We uh, to um, talk about ways that we can get more people, more women, especially involved in boards and commissions in county government. Uh, we have eighty boards and in, in commissions. Um, Last year, 55% of my appointments were women, and I would like to continue that trend uh, to help us uh, balance out some historical disparities. Our boards and commissions are a vital part of what we do in local government, and they really play a, a crucial role in the decisions that we make, and those decisions affect the daily lives of, um, of everyone in our community. These boards and commissions historically have been dominated by men. Um, and um, we wanna make sure that our boards and commissions look like St. Louis and that they reflect um, the diversity of our community. By stepping forward and serving and helping us, um, you can make sure that, that um, uh, everyone's voice is heard and make sure that uh, we're creating a more inclusive and equitable society for all of us by making sure that the decision makers are representative. I think serving on a board and commission can be a fulfilling experience. Um, you will be helping your community, but also meeting other folks and gaining a skill set that will, will, be, um, will be helpful in other settings. Um, and of course, some important connections with thought leaders in the community, people in my staff and other people um, that will share your goals. Unfortunately, sometimes women um, are discouraged from getting involved in politics or serving on a board or commission or a, a volunteer position in government. Um, we're uh, aware of barriers that, that um, some people face, um, gender bias, lack of confidence, lack of understanding of the process, or lack of support or encouragement. And that's why we're going to be very intentional to recruit, to support, uh, to mentor, and make sure there's, a, there's an understanding of, of what's happening. We've partnered with Unite We to help us with this process. Um, uh, this is, uh, Unite We, we does this very well. Um, and we'll be working to increase the number of women, especially women of color, who can serve uh, in county government and have a seat at the decision-making table. Um, we've got an exciting program today where you'll hear from uh, two women who are currently uh, serving on boards and commission. Jill Nowak, who is a member of the Zoo Museum District Board, and Jamie Dolby, who is on the Land Clearance for, uh, and, and Redevelopment Authority Board and serves as, as chair. So I'd, I'd like to thank everyone for um, helping us, our community partners, uh, and sharing their information through their networks to get the word out. and especially the Urban League's uh, Women Business Center, Wrong for Women, We Power, Women Lawyers Association of Greater St. Louis. Um, we really appreciate your partnership. Um, so I'll turn things back to Beth and uh, Unite We. Thank you so much, County Executive. And um, Dr. Page, we really appreciate your partnership as well as the partnership with the county and Matt and the rest of the staff who's been supportive of this initiative. And as you mentioned, all of these wonderful community partners who've been supportive of the initiative and especially sharing the information with other women. So thank you so much. Once again, this is Beth Felsky and I'm the Appointments Project Director um, at United We. And I'd like to turn it over to Wendy Dole, um, CEO and President of United We. Thank you, Beth. And I too thank County Executive Page um, for your leadership and service and partnership um, with this initiative. And also to our panelists joining us, Jill and Deanna, as well as um, also our partners um, today too. I have the 
privilege of just saying again, welcome to this opportunity. And I wanted to share just briefly about United We. Um, United We stands for United Women's Empowerment. Um, we are a 32 year, 32 year old organization with a mission working to advance all women's economic and civic leadership. And I wanted to just touch briefly on what does that actually mean? And our economic development work is really at its very core an evidence-based research driven program. And as a nonpartisan organization, we really are looking at the economic barriers for women and their families serving the entire state of Missouri, Kansas, expanding into Oklahoma and sharing our best practices beyond our Midwest borders. Um, some of our priorities that you see here on the screen really range from equal pay, paid family leave, child care has certainly been elevated as a result of the pandemic, um, occupational licensing, really looking at reducing barriers for women who want to explore entrepreneurship, and the veterans and military community, as well as anti-sexual harassment are some of our key priorities. And then our civic leadership umbrella is really just encouraging women to participate in our democracy, and that looks you know, several ways from voting, but our key initiative is the appointments project that you're going to learn more about today. And we hope, as Dr. Page mentioned, that this, you know, civic engagement opportunity may spur a spark in you to want to go on and run for elected office in the future, as we need more women representing um, key issues that are impacting themselves and their families. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Beth Thelsky, who again, um, is introduced as our Appointments Project Director to walk us through some additional research and the program itself. So thank you again. Thanks, Wendy. I'm going to give you a little bit of background just on Appointments Project, um, which was established to increase the number of women serving on boards and commissions and really decrease the barriers that might prevent them from doing so. Um, so we are a nonprofit, we're nonpartisan, and we are research-based. So um, from that research, we know that women um, lacked the confidence, um, they weren't being asked to serve, they especially were concerned about the time commitment, and also wanted to know that if they did serve, they really um, had a sense of belonging once they were at the table. And we also know that when they do serve, great results. So increase in public trust in government, boost in efficiency, really improving the lives of residents, as well as driving innovation. So I wanna talk a little bit about, um, more specifically, power boards, um, which is a fairly new term, but these are boards that really are um, associated with financial allocations and influencing um, policies that really affect the majority of the community. So more like planning and zoning. And I, I wanted just to note, um, here's some numbers from the Kansas side on some of these power boards. Um, you know, only 38% of appointees are, of, are women um, at the county level in, in Kansas, 34% and state level only 16%. But um, I'm very excited to announce that uh, we have some research that we're working with University of Missouri St. Louis that will be available in July regarding um, boards through at municipalities um, throughout the state of Missouri. And we continue to collect research on um, the current composition um, at both the city and county level um, in the region. So um, as mentioned earlier, we're really excited to have um, Jamie and Jill with us today. Um, and I'd love just to start by having them share a little bit about themselves and the board they serve on. Um, let's start with you, Jamie. Well, I don't know that Maybe Jamie's having some technical difficulty. Um, Jill, would you like to start and tell us a little bit about the Metropolitan Zoological Park and Museum? Sure, I will. Hi, everyone. I'm Jill Nowak. Um, I have been on what we call the ZMD board uh, since late 2019. 
Uh, the Metropolitan Zoological Park and Museum District is a taxing district. It's a little unique uh, in the St. Louis area where property taxes from people who live in the city and the county uh, support a large portion, usually about 30 to 35 percent of the budgets of some cultural institutions. Those institutions are Art Museum, our Zoo, History Museum, Botanical Garden, and Science Center. Um, the board is made up of equal uh, representation from St. Louis County and St. Louis City, appointed by the mayor and the county executive. And um, really what it does is looks to allocate those tax dollars equitably among those uh, civic organizations we support, those cultural organizations, and also um, then have some oversight on the budget and financial responsibility of those sub-districts in those organizations to use those taxpayer dollars to make the cultural institutions more readily available uh, to all residents um, and diversify their uh, participants in their organization. Great. And Jill, can you tell us what made you decide to really to apply and to really get engaged at this level? Well, you know, I think I'll, I'll uh, echo Dr. Page here. I really think that civic responsibility and engagement is important. Um, as taxpayers, we, we want to do our duty to make sure that our uh, communities thrive. I also have a personal interest in some experience in the arts and cultural area through work, and I'm very interested in that. And um, for me, uh, thinking about uh, allocations of tax dollars and how they support those cultural institutions was very interesting to me. Uh, a little no fact is, well, uh, many years ago, I actually applied to work at the ZMD. So it's a place that I've always been really interested in. So I was thrilled when the opportunity came up to serve. Uh, that's fantastic. Jill, do, can you talk a little bit more in depth about, um, you know, any specific action item or particular project that, um, you know, the board has really been engaged in, or maybe it's just a, a proud moment of serving? Um, I think that, uh, you know, a few things happened. I, I went on the board in late 2019, so early on my service, we had to deal with COVID. Um, and during COVID, a long term, the long term executive vice president of the institution unfortunately uh, passed away. And so we had to deal with some secession issues. We had to deal with remote work. Um, and we also got engaged with the cultural institutions about how they were going to continue to serve their mission and serve the taxpayers and the public in, an, in a remote environment. Um, so that was really, uh, really rewarding and engaging work to think about how to come together to continue to serve the community during a public health crisis and was, um, was interested in that. I think the other piece that has been interesting is trying to think about a future vision as the property tax base changes and more folks work remotely and office space becomes perhaps less valuable, which would change the tax base. And what does that mean for not only the ZMD, but those cultural institutions we support and then the public in terms of the availability of those services. So those are some interesting discussions and meeting, dis meeting, dis meaty discussions that the board gets into along with the staff at the ZMD and the sub districts, uh, which I think, you know, really feel to me like we're serving the purpose of the taxpayers to help protect that um, that rich history of those cultural institutions for the St. Louis community. Thanks, Jill. I appreciate you you sharing your your civic leadership journey um, and all that you do um, in St. Louis County. Let's see. Um, is Jamie available yet? I think she still might be having some problems. Well, we would love Jill um, to hear more from you after um, we complete today's program when we get to the Q&A because I know there's several women out there um, that uh, love hearing kind of more of the personal perspective um, from appointees. So I, I thank you. Great. Next, um, I, I just want to give kudos to the county for their efforts in really tracking um, the data and current composition of boards and commissions. 
Um, you know, the transparency is just amazing and really um, part of best practices. So I'm going to turn it over to Matt McLaughlin to talk a little bit about, um, you know, the current status of boards and commissions. Sure. Hi, everybody. Uh, I am uh, the liaison for the boards uh, and commissions. And so anybody that makes an application uh, kind of goes through through me um, as um, before the appointments are made by Dr. Page. Um, so part of our process uh, here has been to be you know, transparent about the appointments of uh, you know, gender by gender and, and race and try to uh, make an effort to be as um, you know, as reflective of society as possible. So we have a, a website, uh, a page on our website, um, that picture of uh, you see in front of you right now. Um, the numbers right now, um, this is sort of an overall picture. Um, I can tell you that in 2022, we had, this was reversed actually. So uh, this again, this is an overall picture. Uh, but uh, we had 54 or 55% almost of female um, appointments in 2022. And uh, our goal is to continue that, that trend and increase that trend as well. Um, you can also see um, underneath there that we have also a, appointments by race also listed. Um, and we do um, um, as much as possible to increase, we want to do as much as we can to increase those numbers. Um, again, we want to have um, a, um, uh, you know, our boards reflected of, of society as much as possible, and it should be as, as diverse as possible. So, so this is, uh, again, this is something you can, you can see um, uh, on our website. It gets um, updated uh, on a weekly basis. So, and, and as well distributed across the county. Uh, this is by um, uh, district. Um, we have some work to do to um, increase um, these numbers uh, again across um, various districts. Um, our South County area, and you know, we definitely need to see, see more there. Um, and just the way to think about this is, you know, what's reflective of what's happening now and where we'd, we'd like to go and where we'd like to go is, you know, more diversity, not only in terms of, you know, gender and, and race and so forth, but also regionally. So um, that's what, and that's what you're, you're seeing here. Thanks, Matt. And um, once again, we will uh, have um, Q&A through the chat here shortly. So if you have any questions, be thinking of those. Um, I just wanted to take a quick look at some specific boards, um, referring to those power boards that we talked about earlier, and just providing some additional data. And you can see um, some numbers here. I think, you know, the great thing, again, is um, just looking when we look specifically since 2020, the ratio of female to male appointees is, um, you know, higher and trending higher towards um, gender parity. So once again, um, you know, the good work of the county. And boards and commissions, you know, um, our goal is to have them representative of the communities. And so, um, you know, that we know the population, 52% female and 47% male. So. Um, just some additional information there. So, uh, you know, we are excited to tell you that you're ready and qualified to apply. Um, you know, one of the the main questions um, we often get at United We is, well, you know, what kind of work do I need to do to get there? And if you're passionate about your community, um, you're ready to serve. So. I want to um, go ahead and take you to this uh, St. Louis County Board and Commissions page. Um, there's the QR code there. And then once you go into the page, you will see um, this is the screen you should see. And I'll turn it back over to Matt to kind of walk you through that process. Yeah, thanks, Beth. So um, a couple of things I would point out is on the left there, you see the explore the boards and commissions, and that's going to be a great place to just look around, see what the boards look like and what things that you might be interested in. Um, and um, 
Beth uh, spent some time talking about the power boards, the really big uh, boards that we need to definitely increase, you know, our representation on. Um, but just to be to be clear, everything that we we're doing here, are, you know, all these boards have important roles to play. And I would really, I really emphasize to all of you that if you feel like there are specific strengths that you have or interests that you have, that there's got to be something there then and, and any of them would play important roles. So, you know, deep, you know, Department of Public Health has several environmental types of boards like the Air Pollution uh, Appeals Board and the Waste Management um, Commission. Um, and we have, we always have needs for our public works boards and uh, that, that cover, you know, the trades like mechanical and plumbing and electrical and others. Those are all going to be, you know, essential functions, and we're always looking for good people. So, so please keep that in mind and take a look. Um, um, and then um, the the application process is sort of two stages, and it's important to to note that because some it seems to get lost sometimes. So the first stage is to, um, you know, complete a profile where you provide um, your you know information and your contact information, some of your background. Uh, and that type of uh, that type of information, and then the second step is to actually apply for the board. So once you've completed your profile, uh, you want to go back to this page that you're on that you would see here, and then you would go to actually apply, and then that's when you would identify the specific board that you want to apply for. In many cases, not all, there's a background check reply required. It takes a couple of days, uh, if not longer, sometimes to, to get back from the state. And so once you get that back from the state, uh, you would log back into your into your um, your your account and um, and go ahead and upload um, your resume and upload your background check and then apply for the board. And then you just click to apply and then I get all your information and then we start reviewing from there. So it's, um, you know, Fairly straightforward process, but remember that there's those two stages. Make sure to complete your profile and then go back in and make sure to upload your documents once they're available and apply for the board. Um, so um, yeah, that's pretty much the process. And uh, you know, it can be lengthy at times depending on openings uh, and so forth and other considerations. So be patient, be patient once you do apply uh, and, and we'll be in touch. And oh, at the end, obviously, if you have any questions at the end, I'll be available. Uh, Beth is also providing my contact information at the end. So feel free to reach out to me with any questions as well. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, this is um, really great user friendly. And so um, it's, it's nice just to go out there and see all the opportunities that are available. Also wanted to add that Appointments Project is a resource. Um, so if you have any questions in general about boards or commissions, um, but we really encourage you to register with the Appointments Project. Um, and by registering, you're part of our network. Um, you know, continue, we continue to do provide programming um, for those interested in civic leadership. We also have some upcoming events. Um, at United We. And once again, um, we have another webinar coming up, Appointments Live, uh, that is women sharing their stories about serving. And then we also have Agilities Advancing Civic um, and Career Journeys. Um, and that's a great program um, by the DeBruce Foundation, which really um, gives women the opportunity to um, not only identify um, their strengths, but learn how to um, articulate those. So now we're ready to open it up to um, Q&A through the chat. So if you have any questions, uh, whether they're specific about the process of applying for boards or commissions, or maybe just hearing more from Jill about her personal experience, um, anything uh, we can answer for you. I would start out, um, Matt, one question oftentimes we get is once you start your application process, 
does it save and can you go back later or do you need to continue um, the process before you log out? Uh, yeah, you can definitely, it, it saves and you can you can go back in. So again, it's that's mostly gonna be, for most people, it's gonna be just filling out your profile. So once you've created an account and you've created your, started to create your profile, you can always go back in and, um, and edit that. So that's that's a very simple process. Uh, and then and then of course, you know, you can then take that profile and apply for any number of boards. So if you if you apply for one board and uh, you decide another one later, you use the same profile and you go back in and you you apply again. And it's very it's very simple and straightforward at that point. Great. Um, Dr. Page. Yeah, I just want to um, raise one um, uh, comment that I hear from folks from time to time when I ask someone to apply and uh, Matt can't find their application, um, that the, there's three little buckets there on that uh, title page when you go to the applications website through that QR code. And the left one is explore boards and commissions. But in that exploration, um, there is a, a place to, to leave information, uh, but it's not the formal application. And you have to come back out of that exploration window and go back to the middle bucket, which is application. And that's where we uh, need you to go through the complete process. It's a little bit more uh, detailed, um, but uh, that's, um, that is the piece where you need to be to actually apply. And then we can, we can see your application and then we will be in uh, contact with you. That starts an automated process where Matt's communicating with you and we let you know where you are in the process. Fantastic, yeah, that's very, very important to note. Thank you. Um, Jill, can you talk a little bit about the time commitment um, in preparation and meeting times for the board you serve on? Oh, Jill, you're on mute, I'm sorry. Um, sure, I'm happy to do that. Um, you know, before I do so, Beth, I do want to amplify something you said about you are ready to serve. I, you know, I, it's a little intimidating thinking about what kind of skill set you might need to have. But, but honestly, I find if you're just willing to listen and learn and collaborate, you know, in my experience, the board is happy to help you understand all the history and things like that. So it's been really easy to, uh, to become part of that board and and feel. Uh, that you're contributing. Um, the time commitment for the ZMD really varies throughout the year. So we have a few meetings scattered in the winter, but we have many more meetings in the summer because that is the time that most of the cultural institutions that we, we support have received their audit report and are getting ready to prepare their budgets for the next year. And so meeting with them um, it takes up a little bit more time. What's nice about those meetings is generally they break them into two parts. So there's the part that is the substantive part of the meeting, which usually takes about 45 minutes to an hour, which is where you actually, you know, review the financials, review the budget, review the plans coming up. But then they're also usually about an hour part that if you're interested in learning more about the programs, if you're interested in taking a tour with the group so that you can learn more about their work, more about their diversity programs, other things that are happening, you can optionally add those in. So you can kind of flex it a little bit in terms of how much time you want to commit. Um, so during the summer, we have a, a, maybe a meeting every month to do that. And then I would say it's quarterly uh, beyond that. I do serve on one committee and that committee meets quarterly as well for about an hour. Great, thank you. Um, okay, another question. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, requirements for serving in terms of where you live? Um, and I think this is just some more detailed information in terms of are each seat based on, you know, what district you live in? And then do you actually have to live in the county um, to serve on um, any of the boards? So that's that's uh, it's a good. These are good questions. Um, as far as the residential um, part of that, it really depends on the board. So the, so there are some boards where uh, um, a St. Louis County residency is specifically required, 
and there's others where it isn't. So you would see if you go back to not right now, <laughs> but if you see our distribution of of you know gender and race that page, uh, you will see some you know where you had the distribution regionally, where some are in no district, and so there are several that you know there are people that are appointed that don't necessarily live in in St. Louis County. Um, you, you'll be able to kind of, in, in many cases, um, it, you'll be able to see when you explore the boards and commissions and you look at an explanation of the board, a lot of times that information is included in that explanation. So if that's, there's a board you're curious about and you want to know if that's a requirement, a lot of times you can find it there. <clears throat> Otherwise, obviously, reach out to Matt McLaughlin <laughs> and I will let you know on that board and whether or not that's an issue. And Matt, to find the vacancies, do you need to go specifically into that board or is there a place on the website that lists all vacancies? Yeah, the website, I don't think publicly has a way of searching that way, uh, but I can, uh, but you can show when you go in and explore the boards, uh, yeah, you can see um, there, you can see the vacancies as they, as they come up. So again, you know, if you are exploring things of your interest and you go into a board and you, you see a vacant seat, that's when you know that, you know, you have a, you know, more of an opportunity. Great, great. Um, you know, one thing we didn't talk about earlier, but I think also that's important to mention just in general um, in serving is oftentimes these uh, positions, these board and commission positions are launching pads for running for elected office. Um, the one I think um, most often where we see that transition is plan commission. Um, so what a great way to start if you are interested and in maybe see yourself one day um, running for elected office. Um, a great way to really familiarize yourself um, with the inner workings um, of the county and the community. Um, we have another question. Can you explain the difference between um, board commission and committee? Matt, why don't um, we'll start with you on that? Yeah, uh, yeah. There's not necessarily a meeting meaning between the different names uh, all the time that I at least that I know of. But that's uh, so. I, I think in generally generally speaking, uh, you know, I I don't actually know completely. <laughs> But I, I don't think there's an important difference between one or the other. Um, it's just um, the names were derived, I think, for you know during an, you know in in an ordinance or a or in uh, in the state legislature and statute or in the charter, and um, they have different names. Thank you. Yeah, and that's my my understanding as well. In working with other municipalities, it's just based on um, municipalities, counties, and even at the state level, just based on statute. Um, you know, some might be more regulatory versus some are more supervisorial. Um, but um, yeah, that's great. A good question, because oftentimes those words are used um, interchangeably. Um, I believe that we have um, Jamie, who is, who is able to join us. Jamie, uh, are you available now? believe she's still having some technical yes I oh, am there. available my right. apologies for not coming on camera but I am dealing with a family situation right now um but I am free to talk and share my experiences for sure great thank you can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and the board that you serve on Sure. Uh, so I am a St. Louis County resident and kind of a returning resident when I moved back to St. Louis. Yes, people do that. Um, and when I came back to St. Louis, it was really key for me to get back involved. Um, I am a mom. I actually ran for office unsuccessfully in the city of Chesterfield as a council person. Um, and as somebody who's just been involved in St. Louis politics, St. Louis community, and really um, just somebody who I always tell people like I'm a walking commercial for St. Louis. And so that's kind of how I got to this point um, and how I got to boards and commissions. I actually started, I think my first appointment was probably I was 19 or 20 in St. Louis City, what was then the empowerment zone. Um, which really helped kind of develop 
through tax credits and other legislation, uh, what we see is downtown now. A lot of the buildings, um, those came before us for funding. Um, it seems, I don't want to say how long ago that was. It was probably about 20, almost 25 years ago. And it, it just was really vacant. And so to see, you really do get to see your work um, change the landscape of the community. That's great. So you've, you've um, you know, kind of mentioned the, the progression. Um, is there anything in particular that you're really proud of that you've been a part of or a specific decision um, that you could share with the group? Yeah, I think so. I currently serve as the, as a commissioner for St. Louis County and I chair the LCRA board. And when Dr. Page uh, really came through and kudos to him, because I think one of the things that a lot of people don't understand is for years, sometimes these committees and commissions, they lay dormant, right? And not because it's, it's a lot of work to get them filled. And while there are a lot of people who wanna fill positions, it's harder than you think um, getting them filled. Um, but he really took on the task of getting that done. And I think for us being seeing the work, we oversee some of the partners and work with L, um, the St. Louis Economic Development corporation, but overseeing that change that's going to happen in Wellston and really being a part of it from, from the early beginnings, I think is crucial. You don't get to see the work. You're not going to maybe see the change even during your term. Like I didn't see it when I was on the empowerment zone in St. Louis city, but you get to see it maybe a decade later when you see the buildings complete, when you see communities, um, the the crime rate changing or the business development changing and you can really see what your commitment um, really does to the entire region. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, one additional question which we often get and um, Jill talked about this a little bit as well, but what is the time commitment that you've dedicated um, to to your civic leadership roles? Um, I, I mean, I, this is not my only one, but I, I really, well, this is my only civic really com, um, major commitment role. And I really would say, depending on how often your committee meets, um, it, I would say maybe, you know, five to 10 hours a month, essentially. Um, but what's going to be crucial, I think, that people understand is how a board meeting works. And depending on what level you enter in of knowledge, it's really crucial for you to understand. Maybe everyone doesn't need to under, understand Robert Rules of Orders, but as the internet has been, has made like Eric Mays famous, right? And so, you know, I don't know if anybody is on here, big Instagram person, but like point of information or point of order, there are things that you really do need to learn of how these things operate and how your civic duties can change, but you have to read, I always tell people, read the minutes, read the proposals, you need to read these things, you cannot go into a meeting blindly and vote and really say you're going to be a part of change when you're not doing the homework. It's work, um, but it's making an impact, so it's definitely work for good, for sure. That's great, that's great, thank you. Um, you know, while we're talking here, I, um, I'd like to know um, from both you, Jamie and Jill, um, kind of what is, what's some advice that you have to offer women who, um, you know, are, are thinking about that next step uh, in terms of serving? Um, Jill, maybe we start with you on this one? Sure. Um, you know, I think that if you, if you feel compelled to serve, you will do, uh, and I couldn't agree more with Jamie, you will do what it's, what's necessary to serve well, right? And it's not, it's not hard. There are steps to learning. Um, you do have to be a little vulnerable, right? You're gonna go into an environment and it's not like everybody on your board is starting at the same time. The, the positions come open and so you might be a novice at some of the things that folks have a lot of experience at. But in my experience, not only in this, this instance, but any volunteer opportunity, 
everybody is there for the good of the, the mission and, and vision of that organization. And they were once in your shoes and they're rarely good about helping um, support you um, in your learning and in getting up to speed so that you can make good good judgment calls on behalf of the of the commission or the board. Um, so I, you know, to me, I think it is uh, nothing to be afraid of, nothing to be intimidated by. We have all done way harder things than this in our lifetimes. And uh, this really is a joyful thing to be part of the community and to be sitting at the table with other people who are also committed to that, to that same thing that you want for your community, which is uh, for it to have good representatives at the table with a, a vision of all of us uh, prospering and doing well because of the decisions that are made there. Thanks, Jill, that's great perspective. Um, what about you, Jamie? What advice do you have for the women out there um, re in regards to applying for a board or commission and getting engaged? I would say just do it. Um, really do your research on the board. And if, for me, the initial boards and commissions that I thought I wanted, I was like, oh, I didn't get that one. I really wanted that one. And then let's say Dr. Page, you know, he was like, I think this will be a good one. And I was like, oh, like, I don't really see. And now I'm on it. And I'm like, I love this board. I love the people that I was paired with. And so not everything that you think is going to be a great idea may be the best fit. But we have to trust that the leaders that we've elected and the, the leaders that work with those who we've elected and understand they have a process and there's a reason for everything and to really stay the course, stay the commitment. It's a term, it's four years, it's not that long, right? Um, but if we're going to advocate for our elected officials to make change and we're voting for them, we have to do our due diligence and support them. And this is a way to support them. Really, these boards, and, and don't get excited by the names, um, you know, no one, no one came up with like a fancy name. They didn't ask my opinion, right? But when you get on them, they're pretty exciting. The change you will see, I, even if it's the police commission board, if it's uh, health, um, aging, um, for aging adults, all of these things are helping shape our region. And if you care about St. Louis, if you care about Missouri, you will step up to the plate. Um, and if you can't step up, support those women that can because we're needed and we're needed in these positions. And I think it takes all of us to make the change. Thank you, great, great words of wisdom. And I really appreciate um, you both, Jill and Jamie, for, for sharing your story and your experiences. Um, really, really appreciate that, as well as your time and your leadership in the community. Um, I'd like to turn it uh, back over to you, Dr. Page, just um, for some additional comments or um, advice that you have uh, specifically um, for folks that are interested and, you know, haven't previously served. Well, I would uh, just say, if you're thinking about applying, then you should, uh, because you'll get the conversation started. Um, sometimes it's a long timeline. Sometimes it takes several months for there to be the right opening or the timing to be right um, to move you along in the process. Um, we do need, uh, in addition to diversity uh, uh, among uh, race and gender, we need geographic diversity and we need skill set and background diversity. So it is a pretty complex puzzle. Um, I would also emphasize uh, not to worry too much about the name because. A lot of things that um, have a lot of authority have a very, um, uh, you know, unassuming name, like the Land Clearance and Redevelopment Authority that, that Jamie leads. Uh, that's a really big deal. And um, when she first came to me, she wanted to, uh, she was interested in something else that didn't have nearly as much of a footprint. And, uh, um, you know, we will look at your background, uh, look at your experience, and, um, It'll be a combination of what you're interested in and uh, skilled for or ready for and um, uh, what where we have a need. And sometimes that that is an issue of timing. Uh, but if we detect even a little bit of interest, uh, we're gonna try and recruit you. So if you self-identify, we'll bring you along. Um, we'll find a place to plug you in, place for you to grow until uh, something else comes open. But we need your help. To, um, to run St. Louis County and to keep us moving in the right direction. 
Thank you, Dr. Page. Um, a question just came through the chat and um, what is Community Improvement District, CID? Can you explain a little bit about those and um, maybe talk about the vacancies there? Yeah, the uh, Community Improvement Districts are, um, uh, or a creature, uh, they're essentially a, a political subdivision and they have, uh, they have spending authority and they can be limited to a few blocks um, or they can be uh, a bigger area and it's usually um, created to create uh, money to support a, a new development. And uh, that money is usually a sales tax um, uh, on, on whatever sold at, at that development. And then they can borrow against that sales tax revenue and make an investment. They're usually part of a local development deal and um, they're almost always populated by people that are familiar with the development or live in the area that's encompassed by their boundaries. And sometimes that's a, that's a few blocks and sometimes it's a little bit bigger. Thank you. Are there any, um, we have just a couple minutes to take any additional questions. Matt, is there anything else that you would like to cover in terms of logistics or maybe um, answering the question of timeline? Is there a season in terms of filling vacancies or not? Like, um, you know, where might some um, more applications are approved at one particular time of the year? Uh, no, no, there's not a timeline per se. We are constantly really looking for, you know, there's constantly openings, uh, you know, happening and turnover happening. And so, yeah, we're, we're pretty much, it's pretty much always open season for, for filling boards. So, yeah, I mean, don't, you know, wait for any particular time. Um, come, come and, and apply and now whenever you're ready and whenever there's an opportunity. And uh, as Dr. Page said, sometimes it can be a you know a lengthy process to find the right the right spot and the right opening, depending on you know what's available. Uh, and don't let that deter you. Go ahead and, and make an application, you know, whenever you're ready. So we would encourage that to happen, you know, quickly. So, but no, no open, no, no particular season. Um, I will um, piggyback the time to apply is today. Right. Or maybe tomorrow, uh, but uh, get that application in. That's the first step, and then we'll start our conversation and coach uh, coach you along, uh, and we'll be glad to help um, you uh, con contribute at whatever level you're comfortable with in in the community. Fantastic. Um, one last quick question back on the CID board. And um, I guess the website showing that all seats are open, is that accurate? That's, uh, yeah, that's not necessarily accurate. So some of the things that we have listed, um, the website right now is very accurate for, for the most part, but that's one that is kind of dependent on what's, you know, what appointment is available for any given CID. And right now it isn't, have, that we don't have an appointment to make to a community improvement district at the moment that I know of. Yeah, the, the community improvement districts are very small. Um, um, it has a fabulous sounding name, but um, it's a very small um, creature of uh, state law that is essentially a way to collect revenue and feed it back into a development. And um, they're almost always governed by people who are connected to that development and who are essentially paying um, paying that revenue uh, forward. Uh, and um, they are less likely to communicate with us clearly. They're more likely to have made a change in their membership and not uh, told us. And um, they've had, they've been involved in some uh, controversy over the years because um, uh, they don't always keep um, the most up-to-date records. And um, it, it sounds like a great and interesting uh, organization, but there are there are many, many more ways to contribute in our boards and commissions that would probably be uh, more rewarding, although we do track those and I do make those appointments. Well, and just to be clear, just as a logistical matter, so you understand that is there for us 
when there is an opening, when there is a CID appointment to make for Dr. Page, that's there for a place that those people can then go and make and, 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 uh, and submit their applications. But that is, it's not an ongoing you know, need that we fill. So, no. but yeah. There are probably 50 CIDs in St. Louis County that um, have a territory of a few blocks or part of a block. Perfect. Thanks so much for that that clarification. Um, is there a board or commission um, where there's a, a sense of urgency or um, where you need to find people sooner than later? <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, I think uh, in the case of, I think I mentioned um, earlier, the um, some of the environmental boards and Department of Public Health. So there are some needs in um, air pollution appeals for the Restaurant Commission. There's needs in the St. Louis Jefferson Waste Management District. Um, I, you know, there are so many, <laughs> you know, I mean, there's just always need. So um and again some of the public works boards i can't think off the top of my head you know a lot of times we have you know a lot of times there's seven board members or six board members and we have four you know and so we just really need to fill those other spots and sometimes they're very specific sometimes you know in terms of what the background is required sometimes not uh, but yeah i mean there there's just always need um so those are some of the ones that just kind of pop to my head great well, as we conclude here today, um, we'd love to hear your, your feedback on today's webinar. Um, really important to us um, at United We. Also, I just want to thank Dr. Uh, Sam Page, um, Matt McLaughlin, um, Jamie and Jill for uh, joining us today, sharing your stories and, you know, taking time to answer questions. Um, you know, I think the message we all heard is, we need you and we're asking you to apply. So, um, you know, we hope you do so. As Matt said earlier, here's contact information. So if you have additional questions or questions um, that um, you didn't have time to get into the chat, uh, please let us know, reach out to us. Also, um, we will be sending out some useful links and reminders as well um, in the next day or so as a conclusion to this webinar. So um, I just want to thank you for your time today. And um, any last comments, uh, Dr. Page? Thank you. And uh, please fill out your application today. And if you're really busy today, then tomorrow uh, we, want, we want your help and uh, we will find a place that works for you. Thanks so much. Have a great afternoon and we appreciate you joining us today. Thanks everybody. Thank you.